Okay, good morning, everyone. Dr. Nat here. So we are covering uh, ENG 3201 uh, AutoCAD. No, it's Computer Aided Engineering Drawing, if I got that correct. And the, today is lecture number three, also graphic projections. So previously, we talked about the drawing tools and how you can make certain angles with your triangles, right? And also a T-square. So those are very helpful if you have to uh, draw it manually. But I don't think so we're going to do that, but you can. So today we are going to cover these topics, which is object representation, multi-view projection. We talked about what multi-view is. It is when we have uh, two to three views or more of an object. It's the parallel view and it should be two to three or more. Okay, so, and then we have the glass box concept. I'm going to look at this. Uh, so in the glass box concept, we have the first angle view and also the third angle view. We're, we're also going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about orthographic projection of point, line, plane, surface, and object. This is to help you, to give you exposure and how you can start imagining things. And then your line convention. Uh, we have covered a little bit of line convention in our AutoCAD lab. We talked about hidden lines. We talked about the center line. But in this topic, we're going to dive deeper, okay? Okay, so we have two, um, two names here, or two terms here. The first one is exonometric projection, exonometric projection. And on your left side, I hope you can see my cursor here. On your left side is called exonometric projection, or sometimes they call it isometric projection. So the difference between these two is like the angle that they portray this. Both are 3D, but it, the difference is on the angle. So exonometric and isometric, you'll be hearing this a lot. And then you have on your right is the multi-view. And I told you before, multi-view is when you have two or more views of the 3D object, but it is in 2D. So multi-view is 2D, but it gives you like different perspectives, right? So again, this is exonometric, or we can just say isometric. That is a more common term. And then on your right is called the multi-view. So you have to know when I ask you to draw the multi-view of this object, you have to know what multi-view is. And if I give you multi-view uh, projection, I want you guys to draw the isometric projection. So you have to know these terms, what they mean specifically. Okay, so object representation. There are three principal dimensions of an object because we view the world in 3D unless you view the world in 2D, so you see everything like paper, but that's not the case. So everything we see is three-dimensional. If you're going to ask me, do we see things in 4D? Uh, no, our eyes are limited to 3D only. Uh, if you know, if uh, physics are talking about 4D, there's no way of us um, seeing that unless there's a new technology that allows us to do that, but I don't think so. So for 3D, we have the width, depth, and also the height. Typically, we only see like one side, but we can imagine that, oh, this is a 3D object because our brains are programmed like that. So even though we see something like this, right? We see something head on, like I'm looking at my laptop. I only see the outline of my laptop and it looks like 3D, uh, it looks like 2D, but my brain configures this as something that is 3D because I'm used to 3D objects. So if I turn around, I can see, oh, it is indeed a 3D object, even though I only see the front side. Okay, so this is a front view of this um, isometric projection. So this is our front view, and this is our side view, or we can say adjacent view, side view, right side view. There's a lot of terms to describe this. So the right, the side view tells you the depth. So the depth is this guy over here. Sometimes they call it uh, length. That works as well, as long as you understand what it means. So you have your width, you have your depth. The side tells you the depth. The front view tells you the width and also the height. And sometimes in cases like this, uh, a two view is already enough to describe the entire, uh, the entire object. You already have an idea, oh, uh, this is um, an, an upside down T block. You already know when you look at this. And then you're wondering, oh, is there any holes in this object? You look at the front view, there's no center line. So there's no holes. 
So with these two views, you already know it doesn't have any hole. It's an upside down T block, right? Here they give you another one. And you can see that it gives you the same information. This tells you the depth and this tells you the width. This is redundant information. You can um, not draw this if you want. And you can be, uh, it, it's enough if you have these two views and you'll already get full marks, okay? Okay, to obtain multi-view representation of an object, how do we do this? First, you revolve the object with respect to the observer. I have an object like my phone. I look at it. Oh, okay, I see the phone. I look at it and I revolve it. So that's the first uh, thing to do, of course. It's common sense, right? Or the second way you can do it is you move your body. You put the phone somewhere and you actually have to move. Of course, that's not the way that we like to do it because at least I don't because I'm lazy. Okay, so number one it is. So this is how you can revolve the object. You put the, you place the object on the table and you revolve it. So you get your front view, sorry. You get your front view and then you revolve it. Whoops, I'm going too fast here, sorry. Is it working or not? Okay, so this is me revolving it. So you get your side view, right side view. Okay, moving on. We want our top view. So these are the basic views that typically people use. Why do they call it right side and not just side? Sometimes in certain cases, the object has also a left side because it's complicated object. So this is why they specify it as the right side, but typically you just call it side, side view, and that is enough. Okay, so we have front view, right side view, and also top view. So what if the observer has to move around? So he maps the object on a plane. He maps the edges, eh? he maps the edges on the plane. So he gets the front view. I'm recording, right? Yeah. And then he moves to the side, he maps the edges again, right side view. And he goes to the top, I don't know how, maybe a stair. Okay, so this works if the object is like super tall, um, super big, like you can't revolve it, so you have to move around. So this is when you use the um, observer move around method, okay? So this is the glass box concept. You put the object in a glass box and you map out, you project the lines or you project the edges. Okay, so here is a glass box. This is the hinges, don't get confused. It's not part of the drawing. As you can see here, the front view and the right side view are aligned. They have to be aligned. If they are not aligned, you're doing it wrong. For example, the front view has some height. The side view has to have the same height. And what else? It has an edge here. So this thing has to map to an edge as well. Okay, this is the top view. Whoops, too fast. Again, okay, so this one is aligning uh, the width. So the top view has the same width as the front view. Again, it has to be the same. If it's not, you're doing it wrong. And then they also have the bottom view and also the left side view. Of course, you can eliminate these views if it is redundant, but sometimes you need it. Okay, so rear view is like the back, right? Bottom view is bawah, left, and then you have your back. So that's your rear view because this is a glass box. So they give you all the options. Okay, so historically, they use a glass box, but Okay, 
Okay, this is just telling you that the height should be aligned for all, for at least um, the right side, the left side, and the rear. Then it's telling you that the width should align with the top and the bottom, with the front view. Okay. And the depth. So this gets a little bit confusing. You see the depth over here for your top view, but it is the depth here for the, how do I see this? Here is on the side, but here it's, on the bottom of the of the side view, right? So it's something that you need to remember. Don't get confused on that. Okay, so the depth should be the same for the right and the left. Okay, orthographic projection of object features. Okay, so we're gonna talk about edges. What is edges? Edges is lines that represent the boundary between two faces. What does that mean? Hello, why is it not working? Okay. So let me read that statement again. Line that represent, edges is lines that represent the boundary. Boundary ni maksudnya, what is boundary eh? Sempadan. Boundary is sempadan between two faces. So here I have this face. Face ni muka eh? Face, face, face. So I have a face here and a face here. So this line that represents the sempadan between these two faces, represents the boundary, right? So this is called the edge. And again, this is a face, this is a face, this is the boundary, so that's your edge. This is a face, this is a face, this is your boundary, that's your edge. Okay, moving on. This one is a um, cylinder. Do we have an edge or not? You have an edge or not here? Anyone? Yes. Yes. Which one is that? For the circle. The circle, ni. Okay, let's see. So this is a face. The face of this guy over here, the circle face, and this, this side, this surface, right? So there is a boundary between these two faces or planes. So this is an edge. Correct. So does this sphere have an edge or not? No. No, because it's, there's only one surface, right? There's only one uh, face. There's no, of course, it's just one surface. So there's no edge. And my face is blocking it. Okay, no edge. Okay. What about corners? Corners represent the intersection of two or more edges. So intersection, like this lah. Okay, intersection, I don't know what it's called in Malay. Intersection lah. Okay, so for your cylinder, there's no corner. There's no intersection. There's a boundary, yes, but it's called an edge. There's no corner because it has to intersect. There's no intersection here. And for the sphere, there's no intersection as well. No corner, no corners. Did I miss out anything? Okay, no. And then we are talking about surfaces, uh, areas that are bounded by edges or limiting element, or you can just say faces. Surfaces, faces, same thing. So this is your surface and surface. Oops, I was too fast. Okay, so this guy only has one surface. This guy has three, if you're counting the one behind as well. And for this, what do you call this? Rectangular cube, eh, rectangular cube, rectangular block you have six faces or surface. So what is, a, what is a limiting element? A limiting element is a line that represents the last visible part of the curved surface. For example, you know that you have something at the back, but you cannot see it. So this is your limiting element. This is your limit. This is where your eyes are limited. What about the sphere? Same case over here, you know there's something at the back but you can't see it. So there is your limit, limiting element or the limiting line. Don't know why they didn't highlight for the cube, it's the same case. Projection of points. Okay, so you have point A, you put it in your 
you put a plane in front of the point, you project it. So this is your point A front view. And this is your side plane. You project this point as well. This is your right side A point. And you have your top plane. You project this point as well. This is your A point top view. Okay, so what it what this uh, slide is telling us that even though it, it's a point, you have to map it or you have to project it on all the planes because this is what you're supposed to do lah, for your engineering drawing. So even if it's a point, you have to map it. If it's a line, then more so that you have to map it on the planes, right? So here, what we what if we have another point? This point overlaps with A for the front view, but it doesn't overlap with A for the side view. Okay, guys, you need to overlap, but here it doesn't overlap. And for the top view, it doesn't overlap as well. So this is your depth, actually. They should have equal distance. Oops. So now we're talking about projection of a line. I'm just showing you guys. Huh? Projection of a line, this is how you... Previously, we talked about dots. But if we connect those dots to become a line, it should be the same. Okay, so it's exactly the same except for now we connected the dots. So we are actually applying the same concept if it's a dot, if it's a line to do our uh, projection. My true length. Okay. What if our line is slanted? Just now, we talked about a line that was on the normal, meaning to say it's either horizontal or it's either vertical in the XY plane. So what if it's slanted, meaning to say that it has some angle to it? What happens to the projection? Okay, so, so as you can see over here, this is our line, but our projection is shorter. But this one, is also not the same length as AB. The only uh, plane that tells us the exact length or the true length is only the top view. So when you have something that is slanted or have an angle, you have to be really careful because the front and the side or the top uh, is not necessarily reflecting the true length, okay? Okay, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to look at this diagram. So this is the actual object or the actual line. You project it to the front plane. It's shorter because you are only mapping what you see from the front. And then from the side, you are only mapping this side. This is like, a, let's say we're talking about a triangle, right? You only map this guy instead of this guy. You only map the vertical side, and this one, you only map the horizontal side, not the hypotenuse, if that makes sense. Okay, hope everyone got that. So the true length is reflected by only the top view, but this is not uh, always the case. Sometimes your side view tells you the true length. Sometimes your front view tells you the true length, it depends. So when your line that you project is shortened than your actual line, they call it foreshortened, foreshortened, or just shortened. Okay, so this is when you have an inclined line or slanted. So this is another type of um, inclined line. So let's see how it maps out. So again, it's, it's, it is shortened or foreshortened. And for the side view, it looks, not sure if it's the true length or not. Let me see. 
And for the top view, it's obviously not the true length as well. So I don't think we have any true length here. Let's see. For shortened, so it's not the true length. Also for shortened, also for shortened. So you don't have the actual length at all. So this is called an oblique line. Oblique line. So meaning to say, all the planes do not reflect your actual length. Compared to the previous one, it was called incline because you had at least one plane that reflected your true length. So this is the difference between the incline and the oblique line. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself here. Incline line, one plane tells you the true length. For oblique, for oblique line, all the planes don't tell you the actual line. So oblique ni maksudnya dekat X dengan Y dia dua-dua ada angle. Okay, kalau dekat incline, satu, uh, you only have an angle uh, at the X or at the Y. So at least the other one is a true length, right? So that's the difference. Those are terms that you have to be familiar with. Okay, oblique and incline. What else? Isometric, orthographic, or multi-view. Orthographic, saya tak sebut lagi. Sorry, it's multi-view. Multi-view, isometric or axonometric, incline, oblique line. Okay. Okay, projection of a plane. Just now we talked about points and also lines. It was fairly easy, I think. So planes is going to be a little bit harder, but it's going to be manageable. So this is our plane. It is A, B, C, looks like a triangle. So we're trying to map it, or we're trying to make a multi-view. Okay, so this is the front view. You only see the thickness of your triangle, or like the edge. And on the side, you only see the thickness as well, but it, at least you have the depth. And for the top view, you get the idea of, oh, it's actually a triangle. So if you were to give me only the front view and also the side view, I have no idea it's a triangle, right? So here, the top view is necessary. You cannot draw this without a top view. So the top view is very, very necessary. Okay, so this uh, slide is highlighting again that your depth should be equal. You have to have it equal. If it's not equal, it's wrong. So the true size is reflected by the top view. And on the front and also on the side, you only see the edge, which is not very helpful. And this plane is on the normal. So this is a normal plane. It's on the X and Y. There's no angle, so we call it a normal plane. Okay, and again, they're going to tell you about inclined plane, of course. So this is inclined. You can see over here that it is inclined from, let's say this is the x-axis. It's inclined by the, at a certain angle at the x-axis, but at the y, it's not inclined. Hopefully, so we can at least get a true projection somewhere. Hopefully, I don't remember this one. So let's see. So the front view is foreshortened. The side view only gives you the edge. Not very helpful. Oh, the top view is also foreshortened. Yes, correct. So you, if you are mapping this side, so obviously it's going to be shorter. Okay, you and then you're mapping this side only for shorten, and you only get the edge. So only this edge tells you the actual length. The rest is shortened. And here they are telling you over here, it should be equal. This is not the depth of the, <clears throat> this is not the depth of the triangle, but they are telling you when you map it out, they have to have, they have to be equal lah. Okay. Nanti kita belajar lah. Nanti kita akan try to um, draw the lines later on. Okay. If you have any questions, you can ask me. <clears throat> so again, let's see. Um, I believe they are going to show you oblique plane or another inclined plane. Oh yes, it's an oblique plane because you have the angle in two axes. 
<clears throat> so the front view is for short term. Side view is also for short term. Top view is also for short term. So this is oblique plane. And again, it has an angle on both X and Y compared to this guy over here. This one only has an angle in the in one axis. So for your side view, you get at least this guy is an actual length, right? It's an actual length. You actually map it correctly. But the rest is for shorting. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, moving on. So projection of object, the views are obtained by projecting all object features to the picture plane. Yes, we know this. So this is going to be our front view. So here they are extending the line. Look, you can look at this uh, object. Sorry, sorry, you can look at this view. This, there is um, a darker line versus a gray line. So the darker line is called the visible line at the point it represents the edges of the object. The, the gray line is just an extension. It's not part of the object, but you need to extend so that you can actually align the front and also the top view and also the side view, right? So this is what they're doing. They're extending the visible line, extending it, extending it, extending it because we have to have the same height and we also have to have the same width for our top and also side view. So now they're trying to draw the side view. So here you can see that the height should be the same and the depth for this guy should be the same for the, for the top view, okay? Again. Okay, so the side view is has two overlapping parameters. One is the height from the top view and the depth over here overlaps with the top view over here. So it has to have the same parameter or the same value or the same length. Now we're gonna draw this side, the top view. So here you have something like this, right? This is the visible part of your top view, but for your front view, uh, the, what do you call this? The hole is not visible. So you have to draw it using hidden lines. This is mandatory, but we have, we're just covering this one. Hidden lines represent the hole that you cannot see from the front view. And this is also represented here on the side view because of course you have that hidden line. You have to imagine that this is a hole. So how do you imagine it? You put the hidden line. And this one also hidden line. It has to be aligned with the top view. Okay. So again, hidden lines, give you the structure inside uh, of the object that we cannot see, but it is there. So you have to draw it. You have to project the remaining surfaces, which are invisible too. So they are called hidden lines. So you can see over here that the hidden lines is dash. It's not center line. Center line is a dash line with small and big uh, dashes, right? Small and big, small and big. But the, for the hidden line, the dashes are all equal length. So that's the difference between center line and hidden line. And if you can see over here, it extends from the visible line. So you don't have an edge, you, sorry, you don't have a gap over here between the hidden line and the visible line. There's no edge. You start immediately and then you leave a gap. Continue, leave a gap, continue, leave a gap. Okay, so this is the way to draw it. Okay, so next projection of an object. So this is our front view. Not yet completed. So our front view over here, this one has height and this one has width. Now we draw the top part, not the top part, it's still the front view, but you know, the top of this object. So it's a semicircle. So here they are labeling this side as S. So from the front view, you can't actually tell that 
the semicircle and uh, the rectangular side is has a depth, right? You can't tell from the front view. So the way that they portray this is you need to have the top view, which tells you that, hey, the semicircle and the rectangular block is actually a distance. And this is also your depth, but not your entire depth, actually. Okay, so this is your top view. You're mapping out this guy over here. And on the side, it looks like this. Sorry, it's this one. So this is your, this is over here. This is your side view. And the red side is over here. Now we're drawing this um, side, the one highlighted in red. So from the side, you only see this uh, like an L, L block obviously not very helpful. So you need your front view to tell you, oh, it's a semicircle. And this depth tells you, oh, the semicircle and this guy has some distance. What if your semicircle is slightly smaller? How would that look like? So again, your front view, this is easy. Extending the line so that you have the same width and also the same height. And this is the side view. You only see this guy and also this guy. What will you see over here? You will see there is an edge over here. You will see an edge over here and like a rectangular block over here for the side. Okay, so you have an edge. Previously, you did not have that edge. Let me, oops, sorry. Okay, so from, from the front, you see the semicircle, which is not exactly sampai hujung, and then you have your rectangular block. And from the top, you, what this is what you see, and from the side, you have this edge. This is important, I want to highlight this. You have this edge because this side and the semicircle is not connected. It's not connected. Let's see the other example just now. This one does not have any edge because they are the same surface. Okay, the edge is your boundary between two faces. This guy has one face only, there's no edge. Okay, so this is why you needed to understand what the definition of edge is. It is the boundary between two faces. In this case, you only have one face, so there is no edge over here. Compared to this guy over here, you have to have that edge because they are different faces. They are not connected. Okay, so I hope everyone is clear on that. It's very important to understand what edge is because it is your main part of your drawing. Okay, moving on to line convention. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Let me take a two minute break, Kaja. You can ask me any questions if you like. Nine. What's the date today? What's the date? Today is thirteen. Okay. okay, no questions. So everyone's okay. I know it's a lot of content, but we have to cover it. Okay, uh, line convention. So precedence of co coincide, 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 coincide lines. Precedence of coincide lines. Which comes first, visible, 
hidden center line which one comes first uh, next one is hidden line drawing and also center line drawing okay precedence of line so when you have two lines that overlap for example you have your hidden line overlapping with your visible line which one should you draw should you draw the hidden line or should you draw this visible line so the order of importance is what you should follow if your visible line is overlapping the hidden line then draw the visible line if your hidden line is overlapping the center line you draw the hidden line okay so the center line is i don't know so the center line is the last one i'm not gonna make a joke on that okay I'm trying my best not to make any lame jokes okay um okay this is our object over here so imagine if this is uh, the view I am over here, standing over here. So this is going to be my front view, okay? Front view. So I'm mapping it out and you see this hole, you have that center line. Again, center line, you use it for holes. Center line is for holes. Sometimes we have our center line uh, in class, in our lab, but that's just because I want you guys to have proxy, yeah? But in reality, the convention is to not have it anywhere else except for holes. Paksi itu buang kemudian. If you notice in your AutoCAD lab manual or your AutoCAD assignment, the center line or the paksi that is not at holes is not there. We just draw it so that we have the symmetry. But the final result, you have to get rid of it, right? This is because the center line is only for holes. I'm going to repeat myself here. Center line is only for holes. That's the actual convention. The lab, we do it just for the sake of making things easier for us. Okay. So as you can see over here, there is like, um, what do you call this? Plus sign, like a T sign. And then because this is like this, okay, hello, cursor. because this is the short dash and you have your long dash. Short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash. Hidden line has uh, equal uh, length of dashes. That's the difference. Okay, so from the top, I only see, why do I not see this edge? Anyone? Should I draw this edge or not? Ouch. Because it is curved. Because it is what? Curved. Because it is yes. curved. Actually, you have to draw it, if I'm not mistaken, because this is one face and this is another face. It's not it's not a smooth arc. It's not um it's not a fillet. If it's a fillet, yes, it's going to be one surface. But in this case, I believe this is like an edge. This is one face and this is one face. Let's see if I'm correct. Okay, so here they are telling you, you have your center line over here. You also have to draw your center line over here. And this is your hidden line. Hidden line to represent that there is a hole. This side, you also have to draw a hidden line, but since it overlaps with this edge over here, you draw the edge, visible line. But in reality, you know, oh, okay. So I see this hidden line. There is a visible line here. I'm and then there is a center line, I'm expecting a hole. So this hole is, should stop over here. It should stop over here because there's no other hidden line. I only have this visible line. Okay, so this is the hole, this is the diameter. Okay, so let's see the top one first. Sorry, the top one, uh, if we have the edge or not. What's that? Where did they get rid of the center line? Okay, let's see. So here you have this side. This is not an edge. You have this side representing your hole. This is your center of uh, the hole. And it overlaps with your visible line, the edge. Okay, as I told you before, this face and this face they are not smooth, therefore, they are two different faces. You, you have to draw the edge. And this hidden line tells you you have a hole over here. You can't see the center line because it's overlapping with the edge. Same case over here. I believe this should be a center line. 
Mm, am I missing anything? Oh, uh, they are portraying this guy, I think. Yes, they are portraying this edge over here. I did not notice this one. Again, let's do this again. Okay, they have the center line. Yes, it's a hole. But at the same time, they also want to portray this side. I did not see that line. Okay, so that is telling you, oh, there is another edge, but you can't see it. From this side, you cannot see this edge, but it is there. Okay, so it overlaps the center line. So hidden line precedes center line. Okay. So we've seen this one. Okay, hidden line practice. Hidden line should join a visible line. Let me see this, except it extended from a visible line. A hidden line should join a visible line, except it extends from a visible line. Let's see what that means. So this is our object. Um, they're choosing this side as the front view, but uh, if it were me, I would choose from this side because this side has more features of visible lines. So um, the way that I would do it is you pick the side that has the most features or the most visible lines as your front view because it's the same like our face, right? You won't draw your back. You won't say this is your front, right? You would say your front face is your front view, right? Because this side of your head has the most features. So why would you draw your back? So you start with the one that has the most features because this is with the way you can recognize things easier. Okay, so if you can't remember, remember your face, you have a beautiful face. Which one uh, should you choose? The one with the most features, okay? But here the example is telling you, choose this side, doesn't really matter actually. You can, they're just telling you how to do the hidden line. So this is why they're choosing it. Okay, so this is the front view. You know that you have edges at the back. There is boundaries, right, between faces. You have one face over here, you have another face over here, another face over here. So you, obviously you have edges, but you're viewing it from this side. So you have to draw the hidden line. So now you're, it's telling you, you have to join it from a visible line. Okay, so you draw it from here. So if you are connecting it to another visible line, you can leave a gap. But if you're starting from here, this side, you have to leave a gap. So you have to pick one side, uh, one side to join the visible line, the other side, you leave a gap. Okay. Let me see the other next time. Oh, they don't let you do this. Good job. I don't know why. A hidden line should join a visible line, except it extended from a visible line. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. If it is an extension, you have to leave a gap. My bad. If it is an extension, okay. So look here, there's no extension over here. When you join, when you draw this hidden line, you're not extending it from any line, right? It's not extending. This is a different line. This is a different line. It's not an extension. This is an extension. So you, you should leave a gap. Sorry. So this is the right convention. So you should uh, connect over here and leave a gap over here. Extension tak boleh. So let's see if they have another example to emphasize on that. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we are viewing it from here. Okay, so this is our front view. We have to draw the hidden line. The hidden line is over here on the top. So this is an arc. You have to leave space. Okay, so why can't you connect? Why can't you connect it with a visible line? Anyone? It's the same case, but now it's a circle. Anyone? Everyone's confused? Okay, so here, if you can see over here, um, they are telling you if, you if you connect this, you are actually making like a full circle. So any extension is not allowed. Any extension is not allowed. 
But if the hidden line is, let's say, a straight line, then yes, you can connect it because it's not an extension. But since this is an arc, it looks as if it's an extension from the arc down here. So you cannot connect it. Okay, so they don't want you to confuse yourself and say uh, and look at it like there's a feature, eh? like, um, well, it's, this convention is to avoid confusion. Lah. So we just follow, okay? So to avoid confusion, it's the standard anyway. So this is correct. This is not correct, okay? So let's see, let's say, uh, I can say if this guy is connected, I can say that, oh, sorry. I can say that, oh, this circle is actually longer. This arc or this sand circle is actually longer than it looks like over here. If I were to only see the multi view, I don't, I look, I, how do I say this? I close this isometric view. I only see this multi view and I look at this hidden line that is incorrect. And I say, oh, this front view, this arc is actually longer compared to this guy, right? This arc is actually longer. And the hidden view is only this side. So that would invite confusion, right? So this is why they cannot extend the hidden line to the arc. So that when I look at it, oh, this arc is just this much. It's not longer than it should be. And this side is the hidden side, edge, hidden edge. I hope that makes sense. Okay, hidden line should intersect to form L and T corners. So let's look at it. This is our front view for some reason. So they want to portray the hidden lines. So here you can, let's see. This is your hidden line, number one, number two. You have a lot here. Okay, so the hidden line, when they are connected, they should form L and also T. And this guy is not an extension, so the hidden line can be connected to the visible line. Okay, look at that. There's no gap. When hidden lines intersect, they form a T or an L. Do not leave a gap. Okay, as you can see over here, this is one hidden line. This is another hidden line. They don't leave any gaps. You have to connect it. Okay, so these are just um, convention. You have to know it. This is your L and this is your T. This is correct. This is incorrect. Okay, so hidden arcs uh, should start on the center line. Should start on the center line. This is our center line. Okay, this short dash, large dash. So they should start. So they connect with the visible line. So it's not an extension. Um, so you can connect it, right? So that's the rule here. If it's an extension, you cannot. Center line practice in circular view. How many slides do I have left? In circular view, short dash should cross at the intersections of center line. We saw the T for center line, right? For small hole, center line is presented as thin continuous line. You saw this in AutoCAD. Some of you drew a hole and you wanted to put the center line, but you only saw a straight line, a continuous line. That's because it's very, very small. And that's okay. It's not wrong, okay? Center line should not extend between views. What does that mean? You have your center line over here and you have your center line over here. You should not connect the center view, sorry, center line. Even though you can, even though they are aligned, you do not connect them because they are different views. So do not connect them. And this is your intersection of your center line. It should be a T. It should be like that. Okay, so this is also a hole. Okay. You can see this is a T, right, for the center line. So immediately you know it's a hole. Between the views, you have to leave a space. Let's say this is the side, this is the front, you have to leave a space. This is the front, this is the side, leave a space. Center line practice, uh, leave a gap when the center line forms a continuation with a visible or hidden line. Just now we talked about hidden line. Hidden line do not uh, overlap with the uh, extension, but overlaps with the visible line. But for a center line, 
Center line should be, you should leave a gap between the center line with a visible or hidden line. Center line should always start with an, should always start and end with long dash, let's see. So you need to leave a gap when it extends with a visible line, from a visible line. So here, this is your visible line. You leave a gap to draw your center line. Mm. You need that leave gap. No. Okay, never mind. Center line should always start and end with long dash. Okay, start, long dash, short dash, long, da uh, long dash. Leave space. Start with a short, sorry, start with a long dash and end with a long dash as well. Habis. Any questions? Oh, three minutes to spare. Any questions? That was a lot. No questions? So everyone's okay. So I have this lecture already on Putra Blast. Of course, it's a lot of content. You can't memorize all of it at once. So it's there. Study it. It's going to be part of the test. Okay? That's all. Thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. 9.30, okay? Stats class. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Bye. Thank you, doctor. You don't have lab tomorrow, okay? Lecture again. It's a lot. Bye. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Bye bye. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Bye bye. Have a great day. Have a good lunch if you're having lunch.